2020 Visions. <sighs> Madeline Hall, February 1961. Dear... Parents. I've fallen in love with a wonderful woman. Belinda. Will you stay with me tonight? My one true love. <laughs> Natasha. You screwed my mother on that bed and never said a single word about it. Natasha, Natasha, I hate you. Leave me alone. Lucy. I'm expecting pregnant. So I'm just the stud. Get out of my flat, bastard. Alec, love. Belinda. I'm nearly certain that I'm two months gone. Belinda, my one true love. Episode four. <sighs> Grand plans. <sighs> Lucy wanted dirt to throw at her mother, and she was happy to pay for it. I suppose it wasn't all that surprising. Like mother, like daughter. I remember how Nasha seemed equally delighted to throw dirt at her daughter. But there the similarity ended. Any keeping fit was strictly subject to contract. More coffee? No, thanks. I'd end up being wide awake all night. <laughs> she wanted it, though. I rather hoped we might be. Alec! <laughs> Jump on her, man! No, you're right. We hardly even know each other yet. We mustn't get ahead of ourselves. We'll soon be together. The question isn't whether, not for me, it's when. Then why don't we start planning? Pathetic. Let's. Where shall we start? The wedding. Wait, in church. Oh, Alec, I'm afraid we shan't be able to. You can't get married twice in church. It would be nice, I know, but I'm afraid it's second time around for me. Of course. Oh, well. Can't win them all. A shame, though. Getting married in the town hall doesn't have the same appeal. It's all right. All that really matters is what we'll be promising each other. Everything for always. Maybe we could have a baby. Don't go there. I shall have to disappoint you there as well. I had a hysterectomy last year. That's fairly clear, then. I do hope you hadn't set your heart upon us starting our own family. You said you... Had a daughter. What will she think? Oh! Lucy? Nothing much. We're almost out of touch. How come? She took a job in modelling and gave up studying. I disapproved. We fought. She moved to Walton of all places. What a dump. And vanished without trace. She's probably still there, not that I care. That's really dreadful. I can't say I've shed too many tears. She chose to make her name by posing for a pornographic magazine. I haven't seen her since. Good God. I'm not the model of perfection you imagined me to be. A divorcee who's fallen out with her own flesh and blood. Was it a sudden falling out? Your husband, I mean. It was just a lot of little things. It... I was... We were unbelievably naive to marry in our teens. And to conceive a child when we were barely out of school. It's scary now to think I didn't have an inkling of how permanent it was. How fundamentally my life would change. I don't think he was interested in me. Not really. It was just the novelty of having... Being... Anyway, the novelty quite soon wore off. He wanted any opportunity to go... Poor Lucy was just two years old when... Oh, what use is there in raking over ashes? But it was the making of me. I'm so glad he left you. If he hadn't, I wouldn't have wasted my time with you, Nasha. Don't you think it's strange how unexpectedly your life can change because of something fleeting? One chance meeting? One small quirk of fate that seems just circumstantial at the time? 
Is there some secret you find hard to speak about? She looked into my eyes and plumbed the depths of my soul. Here, take my hand. I understand. You're not a hardened criminal on the sly. No. Or a spy? Good God, no. <laughs> It's your first love, isn't it? It obviously hits you hard. I'll do the best I can to make up for the aching pain of it, I swear. Like hell you will. The wedding, then. I'm not sure I could bear the town hall either. Tell you what. Torcello! Torcello? What's Torcello? The first island settlement of Venice. Rather desolate these days, but wonderful. There's nothing left but an incredible cathedral and a little church next door and not much more besides. But how could we get married there? Well, if we were to go there, we could get the vaporetto from the city. We could have the whole place to ourselves. There wouldn't be a soul this time of year. We could get dressed up in our wedding gear and stand there side by side as bride and groom and plight our troth. For as long as we both shall live, and go back over the lagoon and have our honeymoon in Venice. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant. Then we can fulfill the town hall side of things when we get back. And this place gets the sack. Mine too. Let's buy a new flat. Then it will be truly our home. Yes. Let's kiss on it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, Belinda. Oh. Oh. I've got to go. I should have known that Natasha was no substitute for Belinda. It was my own stupid fault. I should never have gone looking for her. Even so, I should have told Natasha the whole story. Most of it, anyway. She would have understood if I'd come straight out with it. She would probably have loved me, really loved me, instead of... Instead of... Oh, God, what an idiot I was. And then, to cap it all, I went looking for Lucy. The warning signs were there right from the moment she saw me. <laughs> I should have known. I was just digging myself into an ever deeper mm. hole. Mm. You're quite a raging sexpot for your age. Oh. I was invited oh. to attend twice weekly fitness oh. training sessions in Lucy's flat. I'm glad to see I am. In spite of my senility. Always followed by an equally energetic interrogation. I wonder what she'd say if she could see us two here now. Old silly cow. She'd not be keen on you being seen in public with such riffraff. And she'd be well miffed with you for latching on to me. Oh, Arca Connie. All I did was to oblige your ladyship. You made the first move. Was she any good in bed? Must you... It's so unedifying. I'm just interested because you said the honeymoon was one of your most... Oh, don't tell me then if... Hell's bells. It's the difference between chalk and cheese. We had all these grand plans. We were in love. The whole commitment thing. But this is just a tit and bum affair. Well, frankly, yes. Oh, thanks a lot. I didn't mean... What I mean is it's great. Our physical relationship is really brilliant. But it's silly trying to compare it with... Hello? Yes? Oh, it's you. Hello, Nasha. No, pretty much the same. Same shitty lifestyle as before. Still scoring with a different man each night and whoring all. Well, what do you think? Is it any of your business anyway? At the time, I was convinced it was her mother calling. But now I'm not so sure. Ha! You don't say. Has no one told you that I might be old enough to know what... Now, it's funny you should say that, seeing I've got one right here beside me. The phone did ring, but for all I know, it might have been a setup. I wouldn't put it past her. He's quite nice. 
Mind you, he must be twice my age, so he could be another of your many former lovers for all I know. <sighs> Course it's serious. <laughs> You're kidding. Not a hope. But we're going off on holiday. To Venice. Here we go. Make him cringe. Did you really? When? One of your men friends. She was looking at me closely, relishing my embarrassment, and leaving long pauses while she worked out her next move. Be like that, then. See if I care. Anyway, he's brilliant on the art and architecture. Bet he even knows St. Mark's shirt collar size. Did you, indeed? It can't be this one. He'd be in his 80s. Wait, I'll ask him. I'm not sure. We've not had time for small talk. <sighs> Mother's asking for your name. I tried to get her to end the call. He says it's Mellor's. Oh, he's too gorgeous to be one of yours. If you're so interested, I'm sure I could get him to go to you when I decide to throw him out. Very funny, not. Why all these stupid questions, then? You're just obsessed, obsessed with men. It's because you're so frustrated that you've always hated my success. Hello? I hope you've taken your medicine. Depressing as it may be, it's the truth. Did you take your medicine? I'll say what I like, but at least I'm honest. Be like that for... What do you know? She's gone. <laughs> your medicine, did you take it? I did take it. It isn't there, is it? All right, so you took it. The question is where you took it to. I'm sorry, Roz. I disposed of it. I hate it! It's giving me bad dreams. Well, I'm sorry too, but the doctor has prescribed it, so you've got to take it. What sort of bad dreams? Memories. Things I want to forget. I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do. You'll only get me into trouble. You're breaking your contract unless you act on the doctor's advice. They'll call off your care plan. They won't let me see you anymore. Report me then. I'll have to, unless you promise me. What will they do to me? They'll probably send Dr. Jean. I've got no problem with that. I quite fancy her, actually. You wouldn't fancy her if you knew what she's really like. She's got a filthy temper. She treats us like slaves, too. She loves to read the riot act. <laughs> Professional indemnity, willful neglect of patient care, minimum wage idiots, oh, all that stuff. Please, for my sake. But the dreams! You do want me to keep coming here, don't you? You know I do. If they call off your care plan, it won't be possible anymore. Oh, Roz, that would be too much to bear. I don't think I could bear it either. Oh, Roz. Tell you what, I've got some fantastic news, but I can't tell you unless... The cataracts? Medicine first. I hate these pills. <coughs> yes, I've swallowed them. Look! Well? Dr. Jean spoke to the specialist. They've scheduled your op for Tuesday week. Oh, Roz, thank you. I'm so excited. A little kiss to celebrate. <laughs> mwah, mwah. Please, Roz. No one's touched me for months. Not even you. Not since this stupid lockdown. Don't these doctors ever consider the implications for people's mental health? One little kiss from you would do me ten times as much good as all your disgusting...
disgusting medicine. Nice try, Alec, but not a hope. You might report me for breaking the rules. Oh, no. That would be my lovely secret. We all have secrets, Alec. Belinda knew a thing or two about touching. She made me study with my back to her. She might be sewing or reading or doing the ironing. We were on opposite sides of the room. She could see me, but I wasn't allowed to look at her. We weren't allowed to speak to one another either. But every so often I would feel her warm hands on my shoulders and a gentle kiss on the back of my neck. Those were the light touch rewards. When I'd earned 20 or 30 light touches, I was able to cash them in for some serious touching in the bedroom. <sighs> But she did have the occasional wobble and broke the silence. Oh, love, it's just not right. Perhaps I should work in the spare bedroom. I didn't mean your work. You mustn't go. I've never been so, so content with anyone. Nor I. You're just amazing. As if you had been sent here, specially. Why so gloomy, then? Her difficulties, me. I can't see how. I'm far too old to be your lover. I don't think so. I can't imagine ever... Oh, my darling. Of course we're right. But I know how people think. Let them go on thinking anything they like. Why should it matter? Not here and now, it wouldn't. Only given time, perhaps it could. How? What could they do? They'd probably say I'm a wicked woman who entraps young men in her bedroom, brainwashes them, and then makes them her sex slaves. I would give anything to be your sex slave. Anything? Yes! You'd make an exquisite sex slave. <laughs> I'd fling your clothes into the dustbin. There'd be no escape, nowhere to go. Command me, queen! Just non-stop lust. Then lust away! And much less ironing to do. <laughs> Possess me! Take me! Then it was back to work. And the light touches. Until she wobbled again. <sighs> oh, my love! Your parents, your degree. We'll think of something. And there's Natasha. She'd be dumbstruck. Then don't tell her. Which one is the wickeder? The humble slave or his lust queen. Why don't we just run away? Because people's tongues will wag regardless. Look at that poor youngster with... We the... could pretend that I'm your son. A god you are. No, no, I'm serious. That's all we need. Oh, look, there's Oedipus. <laughs> Belinda, please. A mother with her son... That's not unreasonable for a public image, is it? Then back to work again. I didn't realise it at the time, but she was doing me a great kindness by making me see our relationship as others would see it. She was explaining how our relationship could ruin everything for me. She was telling me that I was free to walk away from it and go back to the future that my father had planned for me. I had not the slightest intention of going back, and she knew it. But she was treating me like a real grown-up, and not the foolish child I actually was. And that made me feel good about myself, and love her all the more. I know. Venice. What? To run away to? No, to visit, silly. Maybe when the term's done. I've got, I don't know, four or five days holiday this year that I've been keeping back. We'll stay in, there'll be lots of cheap hotels, low season. We'll find somewhere nice at quite a reasonable sort of price, I'm sure. That's a wonderful idea. The railway journey's wonderful as well. 
I'm quite low in funds, though. I'll bail you out. No obstacle too great. No. Better still, I'm going to cheat you. That's preposterous. Alec, pet, you do look awfully sweet when you're assertive. I'm your queen. If I decide to flirt with you, there's no denying me, sex slave. It isn't fair that you should have to pay my way. Oh, lovey, I've been saving up for ages. Tell you what, when you're a well-known concert pianist, you'll take me as your mistress everywhere you go. And spare me no expense. I swear. swear. Belinda, my one true love. I swear. Twenty Twenty Visions by Paddy Gormley, with Morris Thorogood as Alec. George O'Reilly as Alex Carer in his 80s. And his three lovers. Sarah Laurie as Lucy in the year 2000. Sophie Morris Shepherd as Natasha, 1980. Olivia Busby as Belinda, 1960. 2020 Visions is a 2020 audio drama company production.